Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 6. A lot of people have been willing to kind of sit on their hands and let somebody else take care of it. A statewide assessment shows North Dakota is lacking in help for people with behavioral health issues. Good evening, everyone. Whether it's drug abuse, domestic abuse, or depression, those in social and health services, law enforcement, and substance abuse are trying to get on the same page about behavioral health. Today, they gathered to find some solutions to get people the needed help. Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter Nicole Johnson shows us how the community is being impacted. We have more deaths from prescription drug overdoses in North Dakota than we do from car crashes. We've got to do something about that. More people are struggling every day, and some say North Dakota is failing those who need help. That if you drew a line from Bismarck to Minot, there's only one psychiatrist on the west side of that line. That is a pretty scary thing. Whether people understand what behavioral health is or not, they're being impacted by it. You know, everybody knows somebody with a substance use disorder. Uh, everybody knows somebody that struggles with depression, um, child abuse, all sorts of things like that. And we have to also talk about suicide because the realities of it are we don't talk about it and it's a crisis. Our suicide numbers have skyrocketed with youth and with adults and we, it's not acceptable. A group effort to prevent behavioral health issues like training teachers to notice signs of depression or abuse and training law enforcement to notice signs of drug abuse and work with others to get them help. In the long run, it costs us a lot more to deal with somebody who needs institutional help because they've gotten so ill or to build more prisons and jails. That is not the good way to do it. A lot of people have been willing to kind of sit on their hands and let somebody else take care of it. Oh, it's Department of Human Services job to do that, or it's law enforcement's job, or geez, the treatment provider should be doing that, or insurance should be helping with that. Everybody at the table is the solution. It's all of our jobs. Nicole Johnson, Valley News Live. Cass County Jail is the only county jail in the state where everyone who is booked or screened for mental health and substance abuse issues. Senator Lee says she wants to spread that around the state, adding almost everyone in jail is dealing with one or the other. Wet and windy. I know it felt miserable out there today, but the rain was actually needed as long as it's not snow, right? Let's find out what we can expect tonight. Hutch? Well, we have more of the same as we head into the evening hours. Basically, draw a line up and down the Red River Valley points east. We continue to see rain. Look at the snow falling in central Nebraska and Kansas. The cold air has dove all the way to the south, mainly off to the west of us. It is on the way. It'll take a little while to get here. And this evening, if you're heading out, the best chance of rain again will remain to the east, although we'll have passing shower chances in the FM area this evening. Temperatures fairly steady to slowly falling. We have some significant wind in the forecast. Suffice it to say, we could have some gusts greater than the speed limit. I'll have details in hour-by-hour -hour forecast coming up here in just a minute on some windy weather and for some, a little bit white. All right. Thanks, Hutch. Mm -hmm. We have new developments out of Bismarck and the Twin Cities that regards the settlement of Syrian refugees. North Dakota Governor Jack Dalrymple says the federal program needs to be stopped, and Minnesota Governor Mark Dayton fired back against governors saying no to the Syrians. Valley News Team's immigration and relocation reporter Bradford Eric joins us with more. Bradford? The fallout from Friday's coordinated attacks in Paris continues here in the states, and now nearly half of all state governors say they don't want Syrian refugees. Yesterday, Governor Dalrymple danced around the question, not giving a specific answer yes or no. That changed today. Dalrymple's office says he is taking it to the next level, addressing concerns on a wider scale, not just here in North Dakota. Dalrymple's office says he joined other governors on a conference call today with White House officials, Homeland Security, the FBI, and the State Department, all discussing their concerns. But Minnesota Governor Mark Dayton criticized those governors opposing Syrian resettlement in their borders, calling it showmanship. I think it's uh, showmanship on the part of, the, of these governors uh, who pretend that they would be able to sanctify their borders so that only certain people can enter their state and, and other people can't. I, I mean, I, I, want, I want to protect the people of Minnesota every bit as much as any of those governors want to protect the people of their states. But it's to, to stand up there with swagger and say, well, I'm going to prevent the wrong people from entering my state, it, to me, is just ludicrous. 
Remember, the Obama administration already pledged to resettle 10,000 Syrians here in the U.S. Also, one of the individuals believed involved in the Paris attacks, for which ISIS has taken claim, reportedly entered France with the groups of refugees making their way across Europe. The FBI director, James Comey, has repeatedly said since February of this year there is no way to properly screen the refugees. They have no records. And the U.S. has little to no presence on the ground in Syria. The multitude of GOP presidential candidates have all expressed their opinions on this topic. And we've not heard back from Attorney General Wayne Stengem's office regarding his thoughts on whether the governor has consulted with him. Stengem is expected to announce his decision to run for governor or not before Thanksgiving. Mike. All right, Bradford. We're working to get a copy of the letter that Governor Dalrymple will send to the White House about why he feels the resettlement of the Syrian refugees needs to be halted. We'll bring you that as soon as we have it. A man accused of stealing a minivan with a child in the back seat has been sentenced in Cass County Court. Ali Hashi has been in the Cass County Jail since June and will spend 38 more days there. Fargo police say Hashi took a minivan that was sitting outside the American and Asian market off of Main Avenue in Fargo while a three-year-old was asleep in the van. Hashi was charged with felony theft and misdemeanor theft of property. He was not charged with kidnapping because police say Hashi did not realize the child was in the van. Hashi originally pleaded not guilty but has since changed his plea to guilty. In exchange for pleading guilty to the felony, the misdemeanor charge against him was dropped. An East Grand Forks, Minnesota man has been charged with a mini-crime wave of sorts against priests at Sacred Heart Parish. 49-year-old Thomas Kelly faces eight felony counts, including possession of meth, stealing a car, and six counts of burglary. Kelly is accused of breaking into several garages behind the priest's residence at the Sacred Heart Parish. Items stolen included a vehicle, shop tools, and much more. Most of the victims were priests. However, Father Alango says it is no big deal, and he has this message for Kelly. I would say that uh, Jesus loves you, and uh, we will help you in whatever way that you can come out of this uh, habit of uh, taking things away from others and uh, causing them okay. difficulty. Father Alango says that he may also go to see Kelly in jail to provide him some spiritual counseling. Charges are expected to be filed against an 85-year-old man after police discovered he had child pornography. Police searched Roger Whaley's home and recovered evidence leading to his arrest. Investigators received a cyber tip from the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Charges relating to child pornography have been forwarded to the Grand Forks County State's Attorney's Office for review. The North Dakota Department of Health says today that they have yet to determine any cause of an E. coli outbreak at the Red River Valley Fair earlier this year. The final report says 62 people were sickened over the course of the fair this summer. State health officials are still unsure if the cause came from one of the food vendors or rather close contact with farm animals. According to the report, no investigation was conducted at the fairgrounds because the first symptoms came to health officials after the fair had already closed. But all food vendors were inspected prior to the fair opening. The vote continues in West Fargo on a $98.1 million school referendum. Polls will remain open until 8 o'clock tonight. Eligible voters can cast their ballot at any voting location. Just make sure you bring your ID. The district is looking to build two new elementary schools add on to the West Fargo High School, build a new hockey rink and a swimming pool. A yes vote will not increase school property taxes, that's according to the school district. Owners of a $150,000 home would see their property tax continue to be about $200 a year. However, a no vote means that a homeowner's taxes would drop over time because of various levies expiring. Now we're going to have the results for you on Valley News Live tonight at 10. A newspaper man says he wants to get into the political arena. Brian Crocious is running for North Dakota State Auditor. Right now, Crocious is the publisher of the Bismarck Tribune. Prior to that, he was the general manager of the Farm and Ranch Guide. In announcing his candidacy today, the Bismarck Republican says while the state is still doing well, it needs to be prepared for times that are perhaps not so good. When state revenue forecasts trend downward, government must be increasingly more efficient. We owe that to each and every taxpayer, and especially to those just starting out, raising families, or on fixed incomes. 
Kirschis is the first announced candidate for the post. The state Republican convention is scheduled for April 1st through the 3rd at Shields Center in Fargo. Now, if he gets party backing and wins the election, he will replace Robert Peterson, who is not seeking re-election. Family Wellness Yoga Studios in West Fargo will be closing its doors Sunday. Right now, Family Wellness members have to pay extra to take classes at the yoga studio, but staff at Family Wellness say today that the yoga studio will not be inclusive in the membership and also will be under the same roof as the gym across the street. People who are not members can still attend classes as a drop-in or can do a trial membership. The staff hopes to have a new building within the next five years. Another Tuesday means another restaurant report card coming up tonight on Valley News Live 10 at 10. Valley News team's Christine Stamwood investigates restaurants in Fargo who need to clean up their act. Find out who they are and which one will be awarded the Clean Plate Award. I know it's only Tuesday, but how about making some plans for a family-friendly event this weekend? The details to come. Most one half inch of rain in the FM area as a soggy day continues. Some serious wind is in the forecast. A few flakes for some. Your hour by hour details are coming up right after this.